Hey, what's up y'all? Bushel Billy here on the 19th of May. And most of the Eastern Corn Belt has just received somewhere between three to six inches of rain in the last 72 hours, leaving us with situations like this out here. Flooded fields about everywhere you look and everywhere you go. Planting progress is well ahead to five year average. We got 80, 90, in some cases, 100% of the crop in the ground. And now it's underwater. So the question becomes, uh, what do we expect in the next couple of weeks and, and where do we go from here? And the first, the first consideration is always how long can this stuff survive underwater? And as long as we keep daytime temperatures below 70 degrees, this crop can last three to four days underwater and survive it before it just gets smothered out and drowns. Now, the smaller the plant, the, the about to emerge, the just emerged plants are more susceptible to the water stress than the plants that are out and have a couple leaves and, and some more roots underneath them. So, but as long as it stays below 70 degrees and we, we get this water off in the next three days, three to four days, uh, that should be okay. So the next challenge is going to be the water molds. Saturated soils are going to lead to a higher concentration of water molds and seedling blights, specifically um, Phytophthora and Pythium uh, we're worried about. And so uh, we need to get the next step after we get the water off the field is we need to get the plant actively growing and healthy to work and defend itself against these pathogens. In saturated soils, the roots don't grow. If the roots don't grow, the plant isn't growing. And the longer it sits there in the soil without growing, the more susceptible it's going to be to uh, the pathogens that cause seedling blight. So we got to get them growing again. And we've got a, a unique situation in this year that we've got some seeds that have been in the ground uh, since the 7th of April, 11th, 20, 25th of April, and they're just now starting to emerge. They're not quite to that V3 stage where they have a, a large enough network of nodal roots that they can sustain themselves. And they're still dependent on that seed uh, for their energy. And uh, so we're, that's a, being in the, the ground that long is a tremendous amount of stress on that plant. It's like running a low grade fever. You just don't feel good. You, you just don't have a lot of energy or vigor and you're, you're more susceptible to other stresses. The, the other thing that's running against the April plantings right now is that seed treatment doesn't last forever. It's all environmentally dependent, but let's say you, you can count on protection uh, from the seed treatment for about 26 days. And we've got stuff that's been in the ground and just now starting to emerge for at least that long. Now it's important to remember, not all seed treatments are created equal. Some have one, two, three, four fungicides in them. And if your seed treatment has a number like a 250, 500, 1250, that's more than likely the rate of the insecticide, not the rate of the fungicide. So you'd have to look very closely to see how many active ingredients you have a fungicide on that seed treatment and what the dosage are. And for example, in, in the DeKalb brands that our EDC seed treatment runs higher rates of fungicide than the standard seed treatment. And those higher rates of fungicide give you a longer residual and plus a higher dose to help protect that plant from seedling blight pathogens. So the stuff that was planted in April is a particular concern because it's small, it's running out of energy, it's running out of seed treatment, and it's been under a tremendous amount of stress uh, up to this point. And saturated soil is just one more stress on the pile that, that it really didn't need. Now the stuff planted in the last 10 to 15 days should have a, a strong amount of seed treatment left to, to imbibe. It should uh, still have plenty of vigor and energy left in it. And uh, we're not as concerned as with the stuff that's more recently planted coming through this okay. The April planting is, is the higher risk at this point. So um, the weather is gonna play into this very well. So we want it to stay cool under 70 degrees until we get the water off the field. The current forecast is 48 hours of cool cloudy weather give us time to get the get the standing water off these fields 
And then by this weekend, it's going to crank up into the 70s and even low 80s, which we need to turn the heat on, get these plants growing as fast as possible to get them through all the stress that they've been under uh, here in the last last 48 hours. And so the weather, if it, if it holds true, the weather's working with us about as, as well as it can. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, especially on corn, is where you're going to be with nitrogen. So, uh, of course, saturated soils tend to leach nitrogen. If you put your nitrogen all up front, you may want to revisit that and consider a side dressing application. You may want to consider how much nitrogen you are counting on in that two by two, which these corn plants are too small to have reached a two by two yet. And now the, uh, the space between the furrows, between the roads is now standing in the water. So how much of that two by two is really there and do we need to make an adjustment before we come back with our side dress application? And uh, so that, that would be the third thing to consider is do we have enough nitrogen out there? Did we lose it? If we keep having these this, this cycle of rain events, do we need to consider stabilizing our nitrogen when we come back with a side dress application? So uh, to be able to manage all this, uh, we're just going to have to keep a close eye over the next two weeks and walk these fields. You know, Lyndon Johnson has given credit that the best fertilizer on a field is the owner's footprints. And that is going to be the case this year. So uh, with, uh, it's going to take a lot of scouting, a lot of walking to make sure we've got an acceptable stand. Uh, the seedling blight uh, tends to develop over time. So we can go out there five days from now, once the water's receded, think we got a pretty good stand, you come back to side dress or do a post application of herbicide and, and have big, big brown spots, empty spots. So it's going to take multiple visits uh, to make sure the seedling blights didn't come on after uh, we took stand counts and thinned those stands out. So uh, it's, it's just going to take a lot of attention, a lot of scouting and you're going to have to make up your mind before you go to the fields, what's your minimal accepted stand? Because it's gonna be after Memorial Day by the time we get back in the field. Uh, tearing things up and starting over doesn't guarantee you any better of a stand than what you're gonna wind up with from the first planting. As we delay planting dates, uh, we tend to push flower and pollination into a hotter season. We tend to shorten grain fill, all of which works against yield. So it's going to be a management decision that each individual grower is going to have to make. What's your minimal accepted stand and, and how late are uh, you willing to go in and replant and fill in these holes? So, and the only way to figure that out is, is we're going to have to scout. We're going to have to walk and keep an eye on this crop and make sure we got enough plants out there to, to get the, the harvest results that we want. So um, that, that pretty much sums it up. It's gonna be a touch and go for the next 14 days. Uh, spend a lot of time scouting, get out of the truck, actually count plants, not just eyeballing rows. Uh, check the low spots, check the heavy soils, the poorly drained soils for signs of trouble first. And you know, once we get a good idea on, on the health of that field, then we'll make a management decision from there. So that's where we're at as of today. Hopefully we'll have better news in a week. Stay safe.